And pulling off something like that will put a strain on any special operations force in the world, especially when the people executing it train for a year knowing that success meant 100% fatalities for them. I simply couldn't believe that bin Laden's people had the skills and discipline to pull off something like that. You know, even reports of them running around flight schools and such, almost like loose cannon, ran up red flags. Almost. Uh, they, they, were, they were running around. They were partying nonstop. Oh, uh, hey, I, I was being... Girls, I, I, everything. Well, you know, I, I understand that, Kevin, but remember, this was 2001, right after the attacks. Right. You know, and what I asked was, you know, why do such semi-bizarre things here when the same thing could be done less visibly in dozens of other countries with much less risk of discovery? Right. You know, there's no point to do it here. Third, and, and she wasn't happy with this, I said, you know, September 11th was a smashing success, no pun intended, for whatever organization pulled it off. Yet, as far as I could tell, and this was late September, early November, no one had taken credit or responsibility for the attacks. Bin Laden sidestepped it himself openly. And while he and others may have done so in the hope that we wouldn't attack their bases, that evasiveness was pointless now that our attacks were taking place. So, I said, lead, this leads to the conclusion that the people who did plan the operation and execute it may not be the ones we are attacking and that they are keeping silence so that we not, do not shift our delicate attention to them. But the last one, and this one, this one intrigued me more than the others, it was one of those intangibles, uh, was that martyrs, as those who conduct suicide missions, invariably see themselves, are in short supply. You know, for that reason, if pre-attack ceremonies honoring them are not possible, post-attack recognition follows in short order. Displayed photographs of the dead, bedecked in you know, wreaths of flowers, funeral celebrations honoring their names, all of those occur, both to recognize what was done and to induce others to follow in their footsteps. Yet after September 11th, and this was in the eight weeks afterwards, there hadn't been even a hint of that blend of memorial service and recruiting exercise from anywhere or by anyone. The people who allegedly carried out the hijackings essentially died nameless and unrecognized, except in the emerging lists of their target, us. That defies both precedent and reason, and said I in late September and repeated it in early November of 2001, reinforces my suspicion that something in this tire exercise is rotten to the core. At that time, had you noticed the reports that some of these alleged hijackers had turned up alive after 9-11? No, I had not. Because I, was were, paying, I, was paying no attention, I was paying no attention to this. I was starting a computer business, and you know, I was almost divorced from any interest in, in what was happening out there other than the fact that the attacks had taken place that the war in Afghanistan was, was in its early phase, and I was less than happy about that. And I became later even unhappier with the, with the drumbeats to the war with Iraq, which just reinforced all of the suspicions I'd had earlier, but I just wasn't interested in it, and I wasn't writing in it. I really wasn't paying attention. I, did not, I was not aware of reports that some of these people had turned up alive. Uh, I am now. Uh, I was not aware of things like um, the 9-11 Commission's report that a, that a passport belonging to one of the hijackers inside one of the planes somehow managed to survive impact, explosion, fire, 80-story fall, ignore the winds around New York generally, ignore the winds generated by fires, and fall straight down to the base of the building. You know. Right. While well, the black box is uh, allegedly oh. vaporized. Yeah, you know, amazing. Isn't that something on it? Um, I would have thought that, but I knew none of that. I've, I've learned that. I've learned a great deal about that, Kevin, um, from a lot of sites, including yours. And I'm not stroking you. I'm mean, just a reality. But I've gotten into this much more, much more deeply, you know, as 2009 unfolded and went into 2010. But the initial, my, my instincts... Um, and I, I, hate to, I hate to say instincts. I was trained as a social scientist where you looked at empirical information and the, the touchy-feely things were the sort of things that the art department and sociology did. But there, there was something about this right up front with just the little information that was available in the open press and without going into 
any research on it, something just bothered me that, that they couldn't do it. I mean, their MO, the, the Al-Qaeda slash other terrorist organization MO, was pack some explosives into a car or truck and drive it into something. Strap some explosives around your body and blow it up. And even forgetting WTC7 for the moment, I'm going to put that aside for the moment, it is a light order of magnitude to go from that type of a, of a capability, if that's exactly what the capability can be called, to go from that type of a capability to the capability to coordinate a simultaneous four-plane hijacking and do it. Right. Yeah, the, the more you look at the details of, for example, the alleged hijackings, uh, the stranger it gets with you know, nobody squawking any hijack codes, um, we, you know, planes flying around in the skies uh, for an you know, hour and a half with no air defense response, and, uh, so, and perfect uh, piloting. Uh, yeah, amazing you know, yeah, yeah, you know, I, you know I, I'm not a pilot, and so when I talk about, about pilot, no, nor am I an engineer. So I, I'm, I'm hostage to a certain extent to the, to the opinions and judgment of, of people I trust. But when I, when I say that, I, I tell people always and always and always, that's not my expertise. I'm a strategy and policy guy. You know, when you talk engineering and, and, and piloting, that's, that's not mine. I have to depend upon others, and therefore I could be drawing the wrong inferences. But I've talked to several commercial pilots and, and fighter pilots you know, to do these neat little little jet jobs. And I said, could you get behind, get into the cockpit of a 757 or, or a 747, a much larger aircraft, obviously, and comfortably fly it? And they sort of look at me. If, I mean, if you had no training other than, you know, the sort of a flight school aircraft, the single-engine prop jobs, and the basic assessment is that with the autopilot on, you might look good. When you turn the autopilot off and try to turn, you're going into the ground. Right. Period. And now, especially that if you're going almost 600 miles an hour, like the uh, yeah. the plane that supposedly hit the South Tower. Sure, like, sure, Kevin. Level, you know, and, and if you're talking something like that, now if if these guys, if the guys that were named as pilots, and I did a did a quick look at the at the bios on them a few days ago, uh, just just to refresh my memory on it. I think the last time, the first time I looked at it was about eight months ago. You know, if these are the guys who flew it. If they actually did it, then we should all convert to Islam, because Allah was certainly with them. Because nothing else in their skill, nothing else in their skill package would have done it. Well, I like to think there would be other uh, other things uh, going for Islam than that. No, no, no. I, I agree fully. I, I was being slightly facetious, but yeah. I mean, uh, certainly nothing other than divine intervention would have had them would have gotten them to fly those planes. They didn't have the right. skills. That they, they did not have the skills. You know, and this, this in a sense leads into the leads into the, the some of the assessments that I'm making now about about 9/11, um, and I guess there's there's a couple of parts to it. You know, and one is that you know people that that, that the the basic government case, the official case, when you when you boil it down to its essence, is that four hijacker pilots flew four aircraft into three buildings and one crash site. Everything else is superfluous detail. Everything else is superfluous detail. Well, the fact that's, that they, no, they I'm knocked, not, down, I'm not knocked being, down three I'm, skyscrapers with two planes is... No, 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 that's, I'm, I'm getting to that. No, just yeah, just okay. bear, bear, bear with me just a moment. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm a tired old man of 68, so I'm slowing down, but bear with me. Um... If any part of that case fails, then the entire argument fails. If any of the pilots could not possibly, by any stretch of the imagination, have flown a plane, the case fails. WT-7 kills the case. It alone, you know, all the rest of this is detailed. WT-7 alone kills it. 